نؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praises due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek help from Him. We ask forgiveness from Him and we repent to Him. We seek refuge in Him from our own evils and our own bad deeds. Anyone who has been guided by Allah, He is indeed guided, and anyone who has been left astray will find no one to guide Him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the only one without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his abd and his messenger. <coughs> o you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and die not except as Muslims. O you who believe, be aware of Allah and speak a straightforward word. He will forgive your sins and repair your deeds. And whoever takes Allah and his messenger as a guide has already achieved a mighty <coughs> victory. My brothers and sisters in Islam, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers as those who have taqwa and those who rush towards goodness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are those who race towards doing good deeds and they are foremost in them. The believers are those who hasten to goodness. And they compete with one another in performing these good deeds. هذه صفة المؤمنين These are the characteristics of the believers. And we find in the life of the Prophet ﷺ one example that illustrates this beautifully. How one should hasten to goodness. In one hadith, it is mentioned that following the Asr prayer on one particular day, after the Asr prayer completed, the Prophet ﷺ, he stood up right after the prayer and hurriedly, he left for the masjid. He left in a rush, such that he had to step over or step between some people so that he could exit the masjid. <clears throat> and typically it is this light that a person step over or step between two people, but it shows what type of hurry the Prophet ﷺ was in. <clears throat> And so the Prophet sallallahu he went to the house of one of his wives and the companions of Allah alayhi they were all surprised, they were worried because they saw him leaving so quick. And so when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he came back and he saw their faces and he saw the confusion and the surprise, he sallallahu alayhi wa he told them the reason for his hurry was that he remembered there was some gold in his house. He remembered there was some gold in his house that he wanted to give for charity, for sadaqah. And he wanted to give it as soon as he could. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And so he gave orders for that gold to be distributed. SubhanAllah. The same rush and the same hurry that all of us soon will be in to go back to work, back to the office, back to the store. That same rush the Prophet sallallahu was in so that he could go to give charity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the sabiqoon, among those believers who race towards goodness and who benefit from every opportunity to perform good deeds. Amen. And with that we find that that opportunity is indeed upon us. As today marks the first day of the month of dhul Hijjah, the last month in the Islamic calendar, and within this month we will come across the very best days of the entire year. And they are the first 10 days of this month. So beginning today, from the 7th of June until Sunday the 16th, which is the day of Eid, 
these are the very best days in the entire year. Within these days, we all know we will find two very important Islamic events. The first being Hajj, and the second, Eid al-Adha. And along with these two major events, there are an abundance of righteous actions that will be and that must be performed. Some of which we cannot find at any other time of the year. We mentioned Hajj, along with Umrah, of course, it takes place, as well as Uthiyah, Urbani, the sacrifice of an animal. And similarly, we find that any and all righteous deeds that are performed during these 10 days are better and greater in reward than the same deeds which are performed in other days of the year. So my prayer, my recitation of the Qur'an, my charity today is better than my prayer, my recitation of the Qur'an and my charity yesterday. Because these are days that are preferred over others. <coughs> There are no days during which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these days. These first ten days of the Hajj. And so it is upon the Muslim that he strives in these ten days for performing good deeds. In safeguarding the obligatory and exerting himself in the supererogatory, in what is optional. Therefore, we have to exert ourselves in righteous actions even more so than we do in the month of Ramadan. And usually, these days, these 10 days, they sneak up on us. But just now, I'm surprised everybody today. Usually, we talk about it in advance, next week, next month, not today. Because usually after Eid, we don't check the Hijri date until it's time for Eid again. And so it takes us by surprise. Whereas with Ramadan, months in advance, we are in anticipation, waiting for Ramadan to arrive. But with this hadith and others like it, we find evidence that we must actually make these 10 days of the Hijjah even more important to ourselves in terms of performing good deeds and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than we do for the month of Ramadan. And so what are some of the things that we can do and should be doing in order to best benefit from these special days? Any righteous action can be performed. But there are several which are given the highest priority by the ulama, by the scholars, and on the authority of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And the first is fasting. Fasting for these nine days. Fasting is of course a tremendous act of worship and moreover we find that the spirit of fasting is restraint. We restrain ourselves from food and drink, from anger, from lying, from backbiting. And so when we are fasting we are constantly reminding ourselves that we must be cautious about the things we say and do so as to not corrupt our fast. Secondly, when we fast it's sort of reawakens the Ramadan spirit within us. And sort of subconsciously it puts us in the frame of mind that, okay, I'm fasting today, this is a special time, I have to do some good deeds today, let me not waste my time. And so if we bring fasting over from Ramadan into this month, the hope is that we can also bring some of the good Ramadan activities, some of the good habits that we have from Ramadan into this month as well, so that we can try to increase our reward. It is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to fast all of these nine days. But if a person cannot, then we can fast as much as we can. But we should make special effort and special care not to miss fasting on the ninth day of the Hijjah. This is the day of Arafah. And this year, the day of Arafah will take place on Saturday. Not tomorrow, the following Saturday. Next week, June 15th, inshallah. And fasting is one day. Just one day on Saturday, next Saturday. Fasting this one day, the Prophet ﷺ says the reward will be kafir of Sanat al The expiation of minor sins for this year and the previous year. Two full years of minor sins will be wiped away just by fasting this one day. Again, not tomorrow, next Saturday, inshallah. So with such a great reward, we should all make the intention from now that we will fast on that Saturday, seeking this reward from Allah. Next is dhikr. 
remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and constantly keeping our tongue moist and keeping our tongue moving with dhikr. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّهْلِيلِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّحْمِيلِ That particular to these days, these days of the hijjah one should increase and say more frequently say التَّهْلِيل لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ التَّكْبِيرِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرِ and التَّحْمِيلِ الحمد لله praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what is legislated specifically for these things reciting the Qur'an is of course from the righteous actions that one can perform because the recitation of the Qur'an is one of the best forms of the one of the best ways of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as much as we can, we should recite from the Qur'an. Charity, spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, feeding the poor people, giving the thirsty water to drink. However we can give in charity, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward, because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, that giving charity does not decrease a person's wealth. And so what is the case of the charity that is given in the best days of the year? The charity that I gave yesterday one dollar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward it as much as He does. But the charity that, that I gave today two, one dollar is given many fold more because today is a special day. Tomorrow is a special day. These ten days are days of greater reward. Lastly, I'll mention the night prayer. Designating the nights of these days for the tahajjud for Qiyamul Layl is among the righteous actions we should make a special effort to perform. But, it's summer. The summer nights are incredibly short. Especially in June. June has the longest days of the year, and so June has the shortest nights of the year. And so, we already find difficulty with Isha and Fajr. <laughs> How are we going to pray tahajjud? That's the water of the mountain. <coughs> We find difficulty with praying the night prayer that we can remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu One advice that I give to myself and all of us is when the Prophet sallallahu said that whoever attends the Isha prayer in congregation, whoever attends the Isha prayer in congregation, he will have a reward for having, as if he stood in prayer for half of the night. And whoever attends the Fajr and the Isha prayer in congregation, he will have a reward similar to a person who stood in prayer for the entire night. So of course, if we wake up during the night to pray the Hajj, to pray Qiyam al of course this is better. Of course the reward is greater. But if we find difficulty, we can refer to this hadith so that we can still seek the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this easy for all of us. Amen. Good deeds. Righteous actions, they can be optional prayers, it can be fasting, it can be recitation of the Qur'an, but it can also be things that we typically don't realize count as being righteous actions. Being dutiful, obedient to one's parents, upholding our family ties, calling the uncle that we don't really talk to. Just being kind and good to the people. All of these are righteous actions which we should engage ourselves in during these 10 days. And of course, we should always be striving for good. We should always be trying to do these things, but now more than ever. In these 10 days, more than in any other days. So at the very least, we have to do something just to differentiate these days from the rest of the year. Today has to look different from yesterday. These days have to have something special to them, meaning from our actions. These are the greatest days of the year, so we cannot let them pass us by without increasing in some good deeds or by taking advantage in something. We may not be able to do all of the same, all of the things that we mentioned, but if we focus on one or two or a few and dedicate ourselves to those things, perhaps praying in the masjid more than we typically do, or standing a night in prayer, or fasting throughout the day, the affair is wise. It's wide. So we can choose however we like, whatever we'd like to focus ourselves on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all success in performing righteous actions in these days. Amen. And while we have mentioned all of these important and virtuous deeds that we can engage in, not only throughout these 10 days, but every day of the year, it is just as important, if not more important, to mention the prerequisite 
of sincerity with all of his actions. With every act of worship that we perform, it is foremost and paramount that we do that act of ibadah, that act of worship, solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning we perform that action sincerely for Allah and for no one else. But what can happen over time is that our intentions can shift. Whether we realize it or not. SubhanAllah, an action which we, we, which we began with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, over time, it can be something that we do only to please those around us. And this is something that is truly very dangerous for us. And I want to remind myself and all of us against it. In one instance, the companions of the Prophet were sitting and they were discussing the Jal. They were talking about the false Messiah, the Antichrist. And of course we know the Antichrist is, is going to appear towards the, end, the Day of Judgment. And it's, it's, it's something very scary, it's something very severe in the Jal. So much so that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the end of every prayer he would seek refuge, he would seek, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from the trials of the Dajjal. So we know it's scary. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he approached his companions who were discussing it. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, أَلَا أُخْبِرُكُمْ بِمَا هُوَ أَخْوَفُ عَلَيْكُمْ عِنْدِي مِنَ الْمَسِيحِ الْدَجَّلِ Shall I not tell you of something which I fear for you even more than a Dajjal, something which I fear for you more than the Antichrist, something which is more severe and more scary than a Dajjal. Companions replied, Bala Rasulullah, of course, tell us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ash-Shirkul Khafi. He said, it is the hidden shirk, the hidden idolatry. Shirk, we know. Associating others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the major sins. From the major sins. If a person dies while committing shirk, in Allah da yaghfiru wa yushrafi. If a person dies while committing shirk, he is not forgiven. So, what is the hidden form of it? The Prophet said that it is when he is a man who 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 is a and he will only make his prayer beautiful. He will beautify his prayer only when he sees another person watching him. Only when he sees someone watching him, then he will make his such as long. He will recite loudly in a nice voice, but usually he's like, Allah, 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 Allah. So we can see how dangerous the scenario this is. If a person is only praying with all of this emotion and all of this dedication when someone is watching him, but when he's alone, he's, proud, he's praying fast, he's praying carelessly, then who is he truly praying for? Who is he really trying to please with his prayers? Allah or whoever is sitting near him? Of course, our prayers have to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَوْتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَاهِ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is commanded to say that indeed my prayers my sacrifice, my life, my death are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. La shayyikan. He has no partners. Whatever we perform of righteous actions, whatever we perform of ibadah, of worship, has to be sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for Him alone. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warns us specifically. He says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, Make your deeds sincere for Allah the Almighty. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept any deed unless it is sincerely for Him. And in the Quran to the same effect, وَلَوْ أَشْرَقُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُ يَعْمَلُونَ if a person associates others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning if a person is doing an action and he has a dual intention of trying to please trying to please Allah but also trying to please others, trying to please his family, trying to please his friends, trying to please whoever is watching him, those deeds become worthless. They will go to waste. They will never be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And so why don't they have come into this very best of days and this great opportunity to perform good deeds? I remind myself first and all of us that we must ensure that our intention is genuine. Our intention must be genuine with every action we perform. That we do everything sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for Him alone. And the last thing I'll mention is the dua of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. He used to make dua, he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him sincere. He would say, Allahumma ja'al amali saliha wa ja'alhu laka khalisa wa la taj'al li ahadan fihi shayta. Ya Allah, make my deeds righteous. Allahumma ja'al amali saliha. Make my deeds righteous. Wa ja'alhu laka khalisa. Make them purely for you, ya. make them purely for your sake, Ya Allah. Wa la taj'al li ahadan fihi shayta. And do not let anyone else have a share of these deeds. This is a great dua, which we should all try to learn, so we can persist in seeking a pure intention. And who better to help us rectify and renew our intentions than Allah Azza wa Jalla? So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant us all righteous actions and sincere intentions. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make us among the sabiqun, those who race to do good deeds. Those of us who are going for Hajj, Ya Allah, we ask you to protect them on their journey and to grant them Hajj al-Mabrur and accept their Hajj. Ya Allah, those of us who cannot go for Hajj this year, we ask you, Ya Allah, to give us the means and the ability to go next year. Ya Allah, help our brothers and sisters suffering in Palestine. Ya Allah, grant them Shifa for their sick and Rahmah for their martyr.